well in 1914. That seems to make me 91 now. <laughs> I haven't changed much. I sometimes think I'm only 19 or 20. This, you know. How many pops? Dozens. Dozens. <laughs> Several hundred, anyway. There's some big pops in this time. This is rather important to make sure that the, the, the kiln is reducing. Production means firing without with a, a lack of air. Uh, if you if you fire with insufficient air, it alters the colours of the glaze, and uh, this is indicates because there's a pressure in the kiln, those uh, the fire is coming out of the out of the spy holes here. These are test rings, you see. We want to discover whether they're wet or reduced or not. If they're reduced, they're grey, you see. See, that's grey. But it's really much too stiff for plates. I like it softer. This is just to mix it, to make it consistent, you see. When it comes out of the pug mill, it varies in consistency. This size of plate, it's uh, 12 pounds. I haven't got the kilograms yet. <laughs> Mr. Comfort, old Miss Elijah Comfort, who used to spend a bit of time patting his larger lumps into, into place, you see, so he didn't have so much effort to centre them. I was probably spatter you with clay. Yeah, you have. <laughs> but carry on. It's <laughs> funny, <laughs> There you go. <laughs> Perhaps I make more for plates now than I used to, because they become uh, more saleable, perhaps, shall I say, and I get more demand for them. It's rather stiff clay, and that makes more, makes it harder work. I want to know the thickness of the bottom. It's quite important to, you want enough clay, you see, that's all going to be turned away afterwards when it's half dry make the foot. 
So I have to have it enough, but not too much. Well, it's all the hands, you see. You use very little in the way of tools, really. I use two tools only on this particular job. I use that to flatten it out presently, and that to just trim underneath, that's all. Oh, and that to measure the thickness. That's a porcupine quill, by the way. And I sort of up trying to get into the the film industry as a cameraman or something. But I didn't. And, and um, I never saw the pottery at all. It does happen to see some pots made. I had a friend who had been to Winchcombe and he bought some pots. I lived near London now, and near High Wycombe, and I worked in a, in a paper mill. Anyway, I saw these pots and I was very taken with them, and I determined to come down to Winchcombe Pottery and see what the prospects were. I met Michael Cardew, who was the owner then and was to become my master, and he politely rejected me. I didn't know what clay was, I didn't know anything about it. I gave up my job, which was rather rash, because jobs were difficult to get in those days. And I went off to London, and I worked at the Central School. Uh, I spent a year at the Central School with... The tutor there was very good to me, very helpful, because she knew, she knew Cardew, she, well, she knew the pottery. Well, she really let me do what I wanted to do, which was try to learn to throw on the wheel. After a year there, I was quite convinced that that was what I wanted to do. So back I came here and Cardew took me on. Most of the 70 years I've been here. I never escaped from Winchcombe, really. And Cardew wanted to go to Cornwall and work. He wanted to have a pottery in Cornwall. And he saw in me an opportunity to to escape from Winchcombe. And he did. He left me very, I mean, he didn't really know what I was doing. Well, it took me a long time to learn. Well, that's it, more or less. I flattened it out a bit more. When I got married, there was a little place at the top, a sort of... <laughs> uh, I was going to say a flat, but it was hardly a flat. It was on the first story. And my wife and I spent our first part of our married, married life there. We could come out of our flat and down some steps, past the kiln, down into the workshop. On one occasion, I was having very tired uh, having been flying the night before, the, night, the day before, and uh, I was having breakfast and we had a friend staying with us. And uh, my wife said, what's that noise? You see? And I said, oh, that's nothing, don't worry. And I went on talk, talking, <laughs> talking too much, of course. And I uh, and said, do you go and have a look? Go and have a look. So I went, quickly went out of the door and down, and the roof was alight. <laughs> And uh, it was quite a dangerous business. The chimney got hotter and hotter and hotter. And the, the hot air used to blast out. And of course, there was, it was built with the beams round the kiln. And so, you know, what happened then? It was very dangerous, really, but anyway. We used to fire about uh, five or six times a year, that was all. And we used to fire in saggers. Round saggers, we used to make the saggers. Saggers were clay boxes, really, different sizes. This pot is interesting in a very historical way because 
It was one of the last pops that uh, Cardew made at, uh, at Winchcombe before he left for Cornwall. It's a great big cider jar, and I can remember it being fired in, in about 1938. And unfortunately, it wasn't properly dry. And then what happened was that it cracked all the way round. So very sadly, it, uh, it was no good. I thought the best place to do was, the one thing to do was to put it in this kiln. We used to use quite a lot of coal. Probably they'd object to the amount of smoke we made, I think. No, I don't, I don't really want to go back to it, but uh, it was all very interesting to experience. Well, this is our stock of wood for the kiln. We have to store it for about a year because most of it's been just cut when we get it and it's too green. And you can never get the temperature if you've got green wood. Have you burnt yourself? Oh yeah, and then they always do every firing. I think the guild is important because it, it is necessary for people with similar ideals to be able to work together and, and, to, and to form a group and, and to share those sort of ideals. I do think it's important that, that there are young people coming along all the time who, who have a similar uh, wish. We never finished learning, you know. Learning extends to the end of your life. Right? <laughs>